Hi, Mike here again with another video about using styles in Microsoft Word. Today I want to talk about what I refer to as inherited styles. Um, you will sometimes see this referred to as creating a style that's based on another style. Inherited styles have a couple of benefits. One of them is that it becomes it's an easy way to create a set of similar styles. You don't have to redo all of the formatting for each of these individual styles. And a second benefit is that if you make a change to the parent style, all of the child styles will inherit that change. So as is typical with these things, it's actually easier to show you these things than it is to describe them. So here I have a document that has a bunch of paragraphs in it, uh, the famous Lorem Ipsum, as you can see. And what I have in this document are a couple of sort of related paragraphs. Sometimes I have a tip. So a tip would be a paragraph in which I tell the user here something that you might want to be interested, that you might want to know. Then I have a note. Um, you know, this is something the user should definitely take note of. I have a warning that, uh, you know, if they ignore this, then bad things can happen. Uh, and then a danger. Um, a danger, I guess, would be um, if you do things wrong, you could injure yourself. All right, I have all these different kinds of uh, sort of related styles. I'm sorry, related paragraphs. Um, in my business, we sometimes call them alerts. Um, so let's start off by creating a style to accommodate tips. And let's say that what we want for our tips is that they have the following characteristics. So I'm going to call it a tip. It's a paragraph style. Uh, what I'm going to say is that a tip is going to have green text. Um, I'm going to say that tips are going to be indented. Uh, I'm going to add a border to them to make them stand out particularly. And um, just for the sake of illustration, I'll say they should be one point size larger than the body text uh, or the normal text. All right, so here I have, you can see the preview here, I have this green box indent larger font size. Okay, create that style. Now I have a style named tip available over in the styles gallery. Okay, so let's say I want to create a style for notes. And here's what I'm thinking. What I really want is that notes should be exactly identical to tips, except they should be blue. So the hard way to do this would be to go through that whole create style business again and set the indent and set the, the um, font size and set the box and everything. The easy way to do it is to create a new style and create it a note, create it, uh, call it note, sorry. And then when I get to style based on, rather than choosing normal, which is the default, I'll say base it on tip. All right. And you can see that immediately in the preview window, I've inherited all of these characteristics that I set earlier for the tip style, green box indent font size. The only change I'm going to make is I'm going to change the color. I'm not going to touch anything else. So I'll change it to blue. So now I have, I'll save it, and I have a style named note that's just like the tip style, except it's blue. And I'll do it again. Um, down here I have warning. Uh, I want to create a special style for that, and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call it warning, and I'm going to say again that it's based on tip. So I'll instantly inherit all of the characteristics of the tip style. The only change I'm going to make is I'm going to make it red as befits a warning, I guess. All right, so I have these three styles, tip, green, indented, box, uh, larger font size, note, just like tip except blue, warning, just like tip except red. All right, save these. Okay, um, as so for purposes of illustration, I'm gonna create another style for danger, but I'm gonna do it slightly differently so that I can show you later why that matters. So I'll come up here and create a style called danger. And I'm not going to base it on tip. I'll just go ahead and leave it as based on normal. So now <coughs> I have to go through the whole, you know, set the font size to 12 business and indent it. And I'm going to set it to red again. But I'm going to also add bold. So a danger will really, st a danger paragraph will really stand out. And I'll go ahead and add the box. So this is going to look similar to the warning style, note style, tip style, but it's not based on tip. It's based on normal. I didn't 
style based on that. I didn't change anything there. So I, of course I had to set all of these things manually. Didn't manage to get the bolt in there, yay. All right, and now I'll save it. Okay, so they all look similar. Um, I think you probably agree that the, creating the note and the warning style was easier um, because, than creating the danger style because I could just leverage all of the settings I'd already made for the tip style. So one of the benefits of this style based on feature, also known as inherited styles, is that it makes it easier to create styles that have similar functions. Um, and now in this case, I just changed color. I changed note to blue, I changed warning to red. Perhaps in the related styles you're creating, all the only thing you're changing is the indent level so that you know maybe notes are indented less or more than tip. The point is you start with the base of whatever you're inheriting from and then you can make specific changes to create the new style. Okay, now let's talk about some follow-on benefits to inherited styles. When I need to make a change, let's say my boss comes along and says, well, these are all very nice, um, but uh, I need them to be even bigger. I'd like you to make them even bigger. And I say, no problem. Um, what I'll do is I'll just go to the tip style and I'll modify it. And what I'll do is I'll change it from 12 point to 14 point Calibri. Now, obviously that's gonna change the tip style, but what else is it gonna change? Well, we know that note is based on tip and we know that warning is based on tip. So what we expect, and this is what you're gonna see in just a second, is that as soon as I save this change, the change is applied as well to the styles that are based on tip. So any change I make to tip will be inherited by its child styles. Now, that did not happen down here to the danger style because that isn't based, I don't know what just happened there. Okay, because that isn't based on tip, it's based on normal. So unfortunately, any change I make to tip will not be made to the dangerous style. And if I did want that to be larger, I'd have to manually go in and make that change myself. So you can see that if you had lots of styles to work with, having to individually change them when you had a, uh, you know, a specification change like this would be kind of annoying. Okay, so let's make another change. Somebody comes along and says, those boxes, those are hideous. Uh, could you please get rid of them? And I'll say, sure, no problem. I'll come in here, modify the style, go to the border setting, remove the box. And you can see here in the preview it's gone. And what you'd expect is that as soon as I save this, the border around the note and the warning styles will also be gone. And indeed that's true. Okay, but again, not around danger because danger is not based on tip. Okay. Now, when I created the note and the warning style, I, in each case I made one change. And that change was I changed the color. So I can make all kinds of changes to the tip style. They will all be inherited by note and warning. But just for the sake of illustration, let me modify something. Uh, in this case, the color. I will change this from delightful green to hideous orange. Now, if I make a change to the tip style, it's inherited by the note style and warning style, right? Well, in this case, it will not be because that's the one setting. Color is the one setting that I did change for note and warning. So if I make a change to the color of tip, it won't be inherited by note and warning, or let's just say it's inherited in a strict sense, but it's overridden by the similar setting for the note style. The note style has a blue color, so changing the underlying color in tip doesn't affect note at all. All right, now, sometimes this can manifest in unexpected ways. So right now, um, we've got this normal style for all the body all the body paragraphs. It's set to Calibri 11 point. Suppose I go in here and I change that to Times New Roman 12, which would be a you know stock font. Now what are we going to expect to happen? Well, obviously the normal style is going to change, but what else is going to change? Basically, everything that is based on normal will change. So what's based on normal in this document? Well, we know normal is based on it. We know the danger style is directly based on it. Okay. What is the tip style based on? Well, tip is based on normal. Note is based on tip. 
warning is based on tip. So what we're actually going to expect is that this font is going to change throughout the document. Let's see what happens. Sure enough, right? Tip was set to is based on, sorry, tip is based on normal. So if I change the font for normal, it will change for tip unless I have overridden that setting in the tip style. So maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll say, oh, tip style should be back to Calibri 12. Okay, now what's going to happen is that notes, tip is going to change, and because note and warning are based directly on tip, they will change as well. Watch. Sure enough. Okay. Changing the characteristics of normal can have this weird knock-on effect. If you inherit a document from somebody that has a ton of manual formatting only, not styles, but manual formatting, because they will have taken something that starts with normal and they will have changed it, uh, you know, a font here or a line spacing there. Um, but then when, they go, when you go to change normal, you know, to let's say Times New Roman or something, all of a sudden all these changes appear in unexpected places in your document. That's almost certainly because the styles that unexpectedly change are based on normal in one form or another. All right, one more thing to talk about here. Let's talk about the headings. So here we have heading one, heading two, and I have a heading three. Now, if you were designing headings from scratch, you'd have to think about this. So you create a new heading, and it is set to, I believe it's what, Cambria 14 point bold with this blue. Great. Now you're going to design, you're going to create a style called heading two. You have a couple of choices here, right? The a natural thing to do, and I would probably do this, is when I created a heading two, I would say, make it just like heading one, except not bold, and I don't know, maybe a different, you know, knock down the font size or something. Let's have a look with what they did here. So modify heading two. Heading two is 13 points in blue, but it's based on normal. It's not based on heading one. That's a little curious. Uh, let's go look at um, heading three. I think we're going to find the same thing, right? Heading three is not based on heading two or heading one. It's based on normal. Ah, very interesting. So you have two choices, right? You, you, these are what you could think of as related styles, heading one, heading two, heading three. So you certainly can set them to be based on one another. As I said, I, my instinct would probably be to create a heading one and then create a heading two based on heading one and a heading three based on heading two and so forth. The designers of uh, this style sheet in Word decided not to do that. And I think it the benefit here is that it allows you to change these completely independently of one another. Let's say I do something silly, like change heading one to, um, oh, I don't know, Comic Sans, because right? everybody loves Comic Sans. Uh, Comic Sans, uh, 16 point, right? Now, if I had used inherited styles, all of my headings would also change. Uh, to Comic Sans, but apparently what they decided is that uh, it's probably not uncommon for people to use different indentations, font sizes, colors, and so forth for each level of heading, and therefore it's more beneficial to have these set as independent. They are not uh, dependent on one another. There's no inheritance between the heading levels. If you create your own heading levels, which normally I don't recommend anyway, but if you do that, uh, then of course it's your choice how you want to do it. Okay, so that's what I have to say about inherited styles. Um, talk to you next time.